Professional wrestling is the most brutal sport of all. Or is it? Believe it or not, there's a secret school for pro wrestlers. And we got inside. TV wrestling is a lot like a cartoon come to life. A world of bigger-than-life good guys, colorful villains, and bone-crushing stunts where somehow no one gets hurt. There's nothing fake about the muscles or sheer bulk of these athletes. So the question is, how do they put on the kind of show fans love without killing each other in the process? To learn the secrets of wrestling, you need to go to a place like this, Killer Kowalski School of Professional Wrestling. Killer Kowalski learned his secrets the hard way, in the ring. He earned his name Killer by knocking an opponent's ear off, then laughing at him. Now, Killer imparts his secrets to a willing audience of Hulk Hogan wannabes. I tell them the secrets that I went, I learned myself. People don't, do not want to see straight wrestling. They want to see something that's very colorful. First primary order in that ring is protecting yourself. If the guy bends you over the rope to try to choke, to choke you over the rope, you have two arms. You drape one arm over the rope. So that puts the rope not on the throat, but the rope under your armpit. You protect yourself. Too much? Yeah. Just lay down for you. What if the opponent grabs your hair? First thing you do is grab their wrist. And if they try to throw you, you go along with it. You always still have your hair. The body slam looks like a backbreaker, but there's a simple trick. Absorb the shock with as much area of your body as you can. The soles of the feet hit the ground. At the same time, the buttocks and the rest of the back and the arms hit the ground. Other secrets are hidden beneath the ring. A thick layer of foam under the mat to cushion the fall. And underneath the entire ring, an industrial strength shock absorbing spring that turns the ring into a giant trampoline. But perhaps the biggest secret is that winning is not the first goal of professional wrestlers. You don't go to deliberately mutilate your opponent. You go out there to get the people excited, make the people notice you when you're in that ring. That's the statement I give all my students. Secret in life, make yourself noticed. The secret to getting noticed is selecting an unforgettable costume and personality. You're easier to remember if you're clearly a good guy or a bad guy. Fans love to cheer and jeer, and they like to know which they're supposed to do. I found this man in the State Correctional Institute. He was put there for violent behavior. This man is one of the three Canadian provinces. He's broken more legs, caused more lacerations. This man is dangerous! And speaking of dangerous, here's one final secret. What do you do when a quarter ton of concentrated mayhem lands on top of you? When a 500-pound guy is going to land on you, say, Our Father, help me. And hope that the spring holds up. There's no such thing as flying saucers. Well, get ready for a surprise. The Air Force actually has its own secret flying saucer. Our government has investigated unidentified flying objects ever since the original report of flying saucers in 1947. Since then, some have suspected that the government knows more than it's telling. Officially, the Air Force's Project Blue Book report maintains that most sightings are familiar objects misinterpreted, not spaceships from another planet, and certainly not secret crafts of our own. But in fact, the government was keeping an amazing secret from us all. The U.S. Air Force, the agency that said flying saucers don't exist, actually used your tax dollars to build one. Now, after years of being classified secret, this incredible project can be revealed. The Avro VZ-9. It's a real-life flying saucer built for the U.S. Army and Air Force in 1959. It was designed to hover over battlefields as an unstoppable flying tank and soar above the clouds at 300 miles an hour. Its creators sworn to secrecy, the U.S. spent $10 million building and testing the Avro car. This visionary craft still intrigues today's aerospace engineers, such as William Blake. Although the Avro car looks like a flying saucer out of the movies from the 50s, the reason it was a circular shape was so it could take off and land vertically close to the ground like a helicopter. 
In this declassified footage of a test flight, the Avro saucer skims over the ground on a cushion of air. Powered by turbojet engines, it seats two passengers. Dan Murray, Air Force program manager on the Avro project, flew in the saucer twice. It was comfortable physically, but it was very noisy. It was quite hot. We could be fine in the middle of winter and be very happy in plane flight suits. There's a more important reason why the Avro never became more than a prototype. The Avro car would pitch and roll and pitch and roll, and it became very difficult to keep it stable. So difficult that the Avro could not get more than a few feet off the ground without wobbling dangerously out of control. One would think it would fly very well like a Frisbee, but a Frisbee doesn't fly well at all unless you spin it. And if you spin the vehicle like this, the pilot would get dizzy. These problems put an end to the Avro program, but not to flying saucers. This is the Cypher Project. It's a robot saucer designed by Sikorsky Aircraft for nimble control and altitudes of up to 8,000 feet. Now under development, it's intended for military surveillance. As flying saucers go, the Cypher is state-of-the-art, and it may be the shape of things to come.